All of your tennis mistakes come down to one simple thing, and this video is gonna reveal exactly what it is so you can focus on the right thing to level up fast. This is very possibly the most important video about tennis improvement you'll ever watch. So let's dive right in. Hey, my name is Ian. I'm the founder of Essential Tennis, where over the years I've helped over a million tennis players improve through my online videos, podcasts, my best-selling book on Amazon. I'm gonna be referring to NTRP rating system, which is what we use for levels here in the United States. So this is important for everybody. I'm about to lay out what level everybody is so that you know kind of where you fall as I make this really important critical statement about what you should be focusing on to level up to the next level. So here in the US, 3-5 is the most common level of tennis player. 88% of tennis players are 4.0 or below. So all tennis players up through the 4.0 level make up, both men and women, make up 88% of tennis players. If you're a four or five level tennis player like I am, then that makes up 9% of tennis players. And 5.0 tennis players make up less than 2%, like my friend Mark Sanset. And above 5.0, the level above Mark, all tennis players are well below 1% of tennis players. So with that in mind, now that you know generally kind of where you fall, even if you're not in the United States, here is what you came for. This is the most important thing about tennis improvement. If you're currently a 3.0 level player and you want to level up to be a 3.5 player, which by the way is a big jump, there's basically 50 levels between 3.0 and 3.5. If you want to make that jump, what's holding you back is the fundamentals of tennis. I'm going to define what the fundamentals are in a minute, okay? If you're a 3.5 player, the most common level of tennis player, and you want to level up to be a 4.0 player, which is which is well above average, then what you should be focusing on and improving is the fundamentals. If you're already a 4.0 player, you're already pretty solid, and you want to make it up to 4.5, just 9% of tennis players, then what you should really be focusing on is the fundamentals. If you're already a 4.5 player, and you want to be in the top 2% of tennis players, then what you should be focusing all your time and attention on is the fundamentals. And if you're already a 5-0 player and you want to go past that, now maybe you can start focusing on some advanced level stuff, but it's still mostly the fundamentals. No matter what level tennis player you are, unless you're in the 0.1% of tennis players that are above 5.0, then you should be focusing on the fundamentals. All of your mistakes come down to the fundamentals. So what are the fundamentals? What am I classifying as the fundamentals? Let me define them for you right now. Category fundamentals, number one, that is the use of the kinetic chain. That means the order in which you use your body to create energy and put speed through your racket in order to hit a good tennis shot. No matter what level you are, to get to the next level, you need to upgrade your kinetic chain on at least a couple of your shots. Fundamentals category number two is footwork. All of footwork, including but certainly not limited to the split step, being in balance, being able to flow smoothly and efficiently, being able to use different stances on your forehand, your backhand, your volleys, being able to use an open stance, a square stance, a closed stance, transitioning up to the net, being able to use different footwork patterns to move efficiently, moving back on defense, being able to move efficiently and everything in between. No matter what level of tennis player you are, I promise you there's some gaps in your footwork the fundamentals, just being able to move smoothly and efficiently around the court, that would level up your game. The third area of fundamentals is tracking the ball and making clean contact. The sweet spot on a tennis racket is not super big. Even our really easy to use fancy modern ones, we're, we're talking about maybe two or three ball widths of space on the racket face where it's really gonna feel clean and pure and you're gonna get off the racket what you were supposed to. And I'm blown away, even by pretty advanced players, how frequently I have to work with them on identifying and picking out where they make mistakes on the racket face and how they repetitively don't hit the sweet spot and don't get the results they should to be able to play the right level of tennis. The fourth area you need to master to be an elite level tennis player is to be able to control the height, direction, speed, depth, and spin of all your tennis shots your serves, your ground strokes, your forehand, your backhand, your slice, you know, backhand, 
your volleys, your overhead. If you can't consistently and on command control the height, the direction, the speed, the depth, the spin of all of your shots, then you can't possibly use the different shot selections you need in order to beat higher and higher and higher level players. The fifth area of fundamentals you need to master to be an elite player are patterns of where to stand and where to aim, aka strategy. Where is an ideal position for every point scenario, whether you're playing singles or doubles, to make the game as easy for you and as hard for your opponents as possible. Really good players are extremely precise and efficient about exactly where they move back to, how they recover, what they cover, what they leave open so that their opponents will try more difficult shots than what they normally would to get more errors and win more points. Where you aim has a direct connection and correlation to what players you're able to beat because it's gonna determine how many errors and how consistent you are as you play the game of tennis. The sixth area of core fundamental skill in tennis is being competent from the baseline up all the way to the net and everything in between. Of course, there's some players who have more of a natural skill of being a baseline style player and some players like me who are more apt or you know, more personally, their skills fit more of a net player type of style of play. But if you wanna raise in level, no matter what level you are now, being a little bit more comfortable in all areas and zones of the court would definitely help you tremendously. We could also throw in the mental game, which is you know huge. I wanna make sure to, to point it out. Today, I really just wanna focus on like tennis specific skills. The mental game is huge, and but we're not gonna include it today or address it. And fitness, we could also include that as well. So this could be eight different categories of fundamentals, but we're just gonna stick with like the six tennis specific ones. Do you think I'm missing any? I think those are the six kind of main categories. Can you think of anything else that I left out? Let me know in the comments down below. If this video has already been helpful, then please do me a favor and click the like button. It helps with the algorithm. Thank you so much. So here's the deal. No matter what level of tennis player you are right now, to get to the next level of tennis, it's going to come down to one of those fundamental areas of tennis. If you're not already a 5-0 level, which 98% of tennis players are not a 5-0 level. So if you're watching me right now, there's a 98% chance that you've got at least one of those, probably many of those different, those six different categories that you have a significant gap in. If you're a 3-5 player or below, many, if not all of those categories, you have a significant deficiency in one of those areas of the fundamentals. And it's only once you get up to 5-0 and above that you really have well-rounded and like skilled ability to execute all six of those areas, point after point, game after game, match after match. Just to illustrate this, let me use myself as an example. Last couple of years, I've competed at the 4-5 level and I've won about three quarters of my matches or so. I, I win quite a bit more than I lose, but I don't win all my matches, so I'm still, I'm very much a 4-5 player here in the southeastern Wisconsin area. Let's go through those fundamentals really quick. If you've been watching me play matches, then you've probably picked out some areas that I'm deficient. So kinetic chain is the first main area. I'm definitely a little behind on my forehand. I tend to arm it a little bit, and I'm very deficient on my one-handed backhand drive. Maybe you've seen me work on my one-handed backhand. I'm taking a break right now because I tore my shoulder and I'm still recovering from that. So I'm just, I've just been hitting slices, in case you're wondering. But when I come back and I start working on the drive again, my kinetic chain is significantly deficient on my backhand drive. When it comes to the second fundamental of footwork, I'm, this is a personal strength of mine. I'm pretty solid. I'm, I'm not perfect. Um, I could definitely improve my foot speed a little bit, but my split step, my ability to anticipate, my ability to move and cover court has always been a personal strength of mine. I'm a good anticipator. I, I run down a lot of balls. Um, so especially like relative to my age as I get a little bit older, it, it's actually a big strength of mine. When it comes to tracking the ball and making clean contact specifically, fundamental number three, I'm not quite as precise as I used to be. I'm gonna chalk this up to just not enough volume of hitting. I give myself like a B plus on this. Pretty solid, but not fantastic. I would say it used to be a big strength of mine, but I've fallen off a little bit as I've transitioned into a career tennis coach. And I spend most of my time on the court making videos or working with students and not actually training and playing matches. 
So what about being able to hit my shots with direction, with uh, being able to control my power, my height, my speed, my spin? I've got big deficiencies here. On my forehand side, I hit the ball pretty flat. I don't have a natural topspin swing. On my serve, I've been kind of stuck in spin mode. and I've been struggling to, to unwind enough to flatten it out and hit it with a lot of power. On my backhand side, I've only been able to slice it for the last couple years. I have almost no ability to hit with topspin. Huge gaps for me as a successful 4-5 player in this area. Fundamental area number five was positioning and targets. I think I'm pretty smart with my targeting and my positioning, but because of my deficiencies in other areas, I have to kind of hide stuff and make up for stuff. When you see me play singles, I hit a lot of backhands down the line to try to get a forehand on the next shot. And also my positioning a lot of times is pretty far over to my right, again, because I'm kind of trying to hide the backhand. Against another four or five player who's not stronger than me, I might be okay. But against a high level four or five player or a 5-0 player, they can really pick me apart and exploit that. Fundamental area number six was competency from behind the baseline all the way up to the net and everything in between. Well, if you've watched me play a lot of matches, you know that I am very comfortable up very close to the net. I'm pretty competent around the middle part of the court and then behind the baseline can be a huge liability for me, depending on who I'm playing, what the court surface is, how fast the court is, stuff like that. But I've got big problems behind the baseline and my comfort zone is as close to the net as possible. So another big gap in my game. So say what you want about how I look as a tennis player. The reality is my results say I'm a strong 4-5 player. Those are my results on the courts. Even with four out of the six fundamental areas having pretty significant gaps and deficiencies, there's two out of the six that I'm doing pretty well. I give myself like a, a thumbs up. And the majority of them, four out of six, I have fundamental flaws in my game that I absolutely need to address if I wanna win a far majority of my four or five matches and maybe make it up to 5.0. I think it's possible for me to someday get bumped up to 5.0, but I would have to spend a lot more time on the training and practice court, shoring up those fundamental flaws, closing up those gaps so that players at the 5.0 level can't just absolutely destroy me by picking on those fundamental flaws. So for you at home, if you're watching and you're 4.0 level or below, I promise you, you've got big gaps in probably all of those six fundamental areas, but more than likely the majority of them, even if you're doing pretty well in, in one or two. So don't fall for the trap that, well, I've been playing tennis for a while. I've been taking tennis lessons for a long time. I've played lots of matches. I've gone from you know 3.0 to 3.5. I'm a 4.0 now. Now it's time for me to crack the lid on those advanced drills and I need to be uh, doing fancy high level stuff with like high intensity and I need to be watching professional uh, training sessions and hitting sessions and copying their drills. Listen, they're so much higher level than the rest of us watching them on TV. It's not even in the same universe. The rest of us mere mortals, unless you're a top 1% tennis player, you have big fundamental flaws in your own game that need to be addressed first and foremost before you start thinking about doing advanced high level type training drills. Now, if you just have fun doing those advanced drills and you feel like a cool player and like it's just enjoyable, then by all means, go, go ahead and do that. But just understand if you ignore the fundamental areas that aren't as fun to work on, then a good opponent on the other side of the court, A, is gonna identify those fundamental flaws really easily, and B, have the tools to pick on them in order to elicit mistakes. How do most tennis points end? I ask my students this all the time. How do the vast majority of tennis points end? The answer is with an error, somebody making a mistake. And where do the mistakes come from? The errors happen when somebody has a fundamental flaw in their game that causes them to just hit the ball in the net or wide or long. Errors come from fundamental gaps in players' games. When I hit a ball in the net or wide or long, it's because I didn't use my kinetic chain, the way that I should have. It's because I'm not as competent from this part of the court as I am from that part of the court. It's because I don't have the ability to hit with the right type of spin or the right direction that I should be able to. And so the errors come when my opponents pick on that fundamental flaw. 
The same thing is happening for you. And I hope that this video helped give you some direction, helped illuminate like exactly what it is that you should be focusing on. So you can focus on the right things, level up your game faster and have more success on the court.